uh, in today's topic we are going to see the calculation for the stiffener ring for external pressure so far we have seen that how to design various components such as the cylindrical shell conical shell spherical shell sorry spherical head hemi spherical head ellipsoidal head flat head under external pressure but while designing the uh, cylindrical shells and conical shells it will come to know or we have we had come to know that uh, we can use the stiffener rings to reduce the length and that l by d o and d o by t ratio further increases its allowable pressure so by using this stiffener rings as a line of support we can increase the allowable pressure for that particular cylinder but to qualify that as a stiffener requirement what clauses we need to Uh, satisfy that is also very important so we have designed the vessel we have considered uh, that it is uh, getting split in two or three half based upon the number of stiffness we are going to uh, get selected but after that we should also check that, that as per uc 29 whether the selected stiffener is satisfying the requirement of this code or not if it is not satisfying the code requirement then the, in that case we cannot consider that as a line of support and we can't take that as an advantage and we cannot split the length in the two or three half based upon the number of stiffness so to consider it as a line of support it needs to satisfy the requirement of ug29 so the stiffener ring design is mentioned in ug29 and in ug29 the whole procedure is been given that how to design uh, the stiffener ring so what is that step or the procedure so let's say this is the stiffener ring this is one vessel for which we supposed to design the stiffener so what is the design procedure so that design procedure is start with there are only three steps so it's not so very complicated so uh, uh, what we need to do we have to calculate first what is the requirement of moment of inertia at that junction where we are providing this stiffener ring there two options have been given to us by the court uh, we can only consider or uh, calculate the required moment of inertia only for the stiffener ring and the other option is we can take the advantage of the shell also which is contributing in that area as a providing contribute contribution in moment of inertia so we can either calculate only the moment of inertia for the stiffening ring or we can calculate the moment of inertia for the shell and stiffening ring junction or the cross section together so is is nothing but the required moment of inertia for only stiffener ring and is dash is nothing but the required moment of inertia of the stiffener ring as well as the shell cross section both together the first requirement is to calculate the required moment of inertia of that junction then what we need to do then we have to calculate the available moment of inertia if we are using only the ring or we want to calculate only the moment of inertia in the ring then i will be the moment of inertia of that ring section that what we need to calculate and if we are taking the credit of that section which is or the shell section which is supporting or contributing to the moment of inertia in that case we have to calculate i dash so i dash is available moment of inertia in the shell and the stiffener ring cross section both together after calculation of this available moment of inertia in third step what we need to do is we need to compare this available moment of inertia with the required moment of inertia if the available moment of inertia is sufficient it is more than the requirement then we can say whatever selection we have done is safe and we can proceed with the design and if it is not if the available moment of inertia is less than the required moment of inertia then the design is not safe now we have to change the cross section of the stiffening ring and we have to again perform the calculation so when we are reperforming the calculation we also need to calculate the required area one more time why so as we are changing the uh, stiffening ring why the required moment of inertia is getting changed because it also depends upon the area of that stiffening ring which is contributing in that region so the area of the stiffening ring will be required to be calculated and that will also depends upon the cross sectional area of that stiffening ring hence we also need to back calculate or recalculate the required moment of inertia so our requirement to check is whether the available moment of inertia is more than the required moment of inertia or not
To become a pro in static equipment design, join our in-depth and professional training. To avail the biggest discounts on courses, click on the link in the description. Explore the various courses and discounts available. Happy learning!